Dry sockets. We've all heard of that painful thing we can get after a tooth extraction. Well, I get questions quite often of, can I get a dry socket when I get a dental implant? Well, I'm Nick Hansen. Today, I'm gonna get to the point on dry sockets. So to answer the question, can I get a dry socket from dental implants? We are gonna first have to start off with, what is a dry socket? So the medical term is alveolar osteitis, but most of us don't know it by that. We most of us know it by dry socket. And dry socket is exactly what it sounds like. It's a hole that's been exposed and becomes dry. So what happens is a doctor removes a tooth from a patient and it leaves an exposed hole. If that hole doesn't get covered up, then we have a open socket, uh, the hole that the tooth was in, and that can let different food and debris get down into that socket. So why do they call it a dry socket? It's a dry socket whenever a blood clot doesn't form, and you can tell because you can look at the site, and if it's not a red blood clot around that, around that hole, and you just see white bone, you know that the blood clot's been either dislodged or never formed. And there's different ways that we can prevent those things from happening. So what kind of things can we do to help prevent us from going through the pain and discomfort of a dry socket? Well, we want that blood clot to form. So how do we make sure that blood clot forms? Well, a couple things that can delay that. One is tobacco use. So we all know that tobacco is going to slow the healing process. So if we're not healing quickly and our, and our blood's not clotting quickly, then it leaves that bone exposed for longer and can cause a dry socket. Another way is different medications. So a popular one would be birth control. And birth control is going to increase a female's estrogen levels, which is gonna cause a little bit of excess bleeding that will prevent a blood, the blood from clotting quickly. So we want to let our doctors know that hey, we're taking different medications uh, that might cause this excess bleeding that might prevent the blood from clotting and let them take precautionary measures that way. Anybody that's had a dental procedure knows that funny feeling you get when the anesthesia starts wearing off and you feel a little bit of numbness in your face and it might give you the urge to want to spit. Well, that's one of the things we want to prevent is we don't want to spit after having a tooth extracted because that constant spitting or even drinking through a straw, the sucking, can dislodge a blood clot. So we want to make sure we stay away from spitting and drinking through straws so that we can allow our bodies to have that blood clot form without it getting dislodged. So now we know a dry socket is an open hole that's now been exposed that allows debris to cause infection. So can we get a dry socket when we get a dental implant? The good news is, no, we can't. The dental implant is actually going to protect the bone. So it's covering up that hole. So instead of leaving it exposed, we're going in and we're putting an implant in that site. So for a lot of people that are doing anterior teeth, we can do an extraction and an implant at the same time. Now, if a site is infected or we're doing a molar tooth that's got three roots, then we might need to extract, clean out the area, come back, and that's gonna leave an open hole during that healing phase. So we still wanna follow all those rules, you know, smoking, drinking through straws, you know, spitting, staying off of medications that might cause us to uh, have some excess bleeding. But the great news is, if we're able to get that implant right away, it's going to protect us from getting a dry socket. I hope this video helped you to understand what a dry socket is and how Dental implants are actually going to help protect you from getting dry sockets. Well, I'm Nick Hansen. Today, we got to the point on dry sockets.